What's going on everybody? Jem Mint here back again with another Omnibus haul and man, what a haul it is. Got to give a big shout out to Marvel Comics for sending through some advanced copies, some books that don't even come out until November in this haul, and Organic Price Books for sending us the rest. Organic Price Books is an excellent option to buy your Omnibus online. They have great prices, excellent packaging, super fast shipping, pre-order availability, and you can save $2 off every order by using the code GEMMINT at checkout, so give them a try. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. All right, guys, so I tried to organize this in order of stuff that's already out, and then the pre-release stuff, stuff that comes out sooner to later, but we are gonna start with the loan trade paperback of this haul, an epic collection, and this one is a pre-release as well. This is the Kill Raven epic. Let's jump into it. All right, so like I said, first up, we have the Kill Raven Epic Collection. This one is scheduled to be released on October 6th. It's got a $45 cover price with 504 pages. I'm not familiar with Kill Raven. This looks like it's a Bronze Age futuristic sci fi thriller set in the year 2018, which is pretty funny. So you can see it collects Amazing Adventures 18 through 39, Marvel Team Up 45, and uh, Marvel Graphic Novel 7. This is volume one. So. You can just pick up and start here. Let's flip through some of this and take a look at the artwork. Now it's Herb Trempe, so it's got great art to it. I mean, I'm digging Bronze Age stuff. I'm just not familiar with the character or the story here. The name does sound familiar. I'm sure they utilized Kill Raven in some other way, shape, or form, but uh, not a character that was on my radar. But if they're printing an epic collection, I'm sure there's a, some fans out there for them. Warrior of the Worlds. Oh, look, I'm teaming up with Spider-Man here. It's got some dope Bronze Age artwork, though. I'll tell you that. All right, guys. Next up, we got Berserk. This one is already released. It's the 8th Deluxe Edition. I've already read this material in the individual volumes, but I was thinking about rereading it and doing a review for you guys. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see that. But for now, let's just take a little look inside. Ah, yes, Berserk. Something I know very much about. So uh, I was picking up these Deluxe Editions as they were coming out, but I love the story so much that I went and got all of the trade paperback volumes to get caught up. So I read this material once. Uh, like I said, I'm interested to double back, read it again, and do a review. Uh, it does have three fold-out posters, front and back, right in the front here. Uh, I don't know if that was always intended or if, because this is the first deluxe edition to come out since Kentaro's passing. But um, they're in here. Not that I would rip them out and put them up anywhere, but hey, do what you'd like. So flipping through this to try to like jog my memory on where this is, uh, we're in the Falcon of the Millennium Empire arc, and uh, a lot of touching stuff in here with Guts and Casca. Uh, he saved her from the last Deluxe Edition, uh, but now Griffith is back. You have him teamed up with Zod, so there's some epic battles here with that. Griffith setting up his empire, the whole thing that he always wanted to do uh, starts uh, bearing fruit in this volume. And the stuff with Casca, I mean, she can't look at Guts without seeing the rage demon that's within him. She always gets flashbacks to the Eclipse every time she sees him, so he can't, like, get through to her, which is very frustrating for him, uh, and, and we see that in this book. Artwork is great. Characters are great. It's fast-paced. You, you want to see what happens. It's a page-turner. We got the reappearance of some trolls here. Uh, we have Shirky doing her witchcraft stuff, so I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna blaze through this again and, and bust out a review probably with Fee. Here's some more colorized stuff in the back. There we go. All right, guys, so Preacher, Volume 2, completing the epic run by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. This one recently came out. Let's flip through it, see what the construction's like, see what the art looks like, and I'll give my thoughts on the story. All right, guys, here goes Preacher. So, dust jacket cover on the front. Here's the spine. And then we have the back here. So, $125 cover price. It collects... Uh, some of the mini series is issues 34 through 66, which is the last issue, but Preacher Special, One Man's War, issue one, the Good Old Boys one, uh, the story you, uh, the story of You Know Who, and Tell uh, Tall in the Saddle. I can't read today. The inside of the dust jacket just gives a biography on Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, 
and it is uh, the 25th anniversary so some graphics on the hardcover itself let's see how the uh, binding is somebody recently messaged me asking about the omnibus versus the absolute editions and that they heard the omnibus had bad binding with a lot of gutter loss i mean i flipped through this one um it wasn't that bad i mean i guess i'm just used to a lot of these thicker books i guess in the sense that yeah you have to basically get to the middle of it before you can lay it down flat Jeez. so yeah i guess in that sense i mean there is a little bit of gutter loss but nothing too bad the absolutes are always going to be the superior format but anyway enough about that i love this story i like uh the characters the dialogue i like this big epic scope uh, of what they're dealing with here not to give any spoilers if you guys like i did a review on the absolutes which i talk about the story in full but i think it's one of those classic i, I want to say indie stories but it's dc vertigo but it's one of those must read stories for comic book fans you got to get this one under your belt i think that you'll be happy that you did uh let's see what we got in the back here Ooh, a preacher gallery So it looks like what? Oh, reference photos that they took for the artwork. Some covers. Yeah, man. So I, I decided to uh, sell the absolutes, go with the omnibus, because that's really what I collect. You know, I, I just try to keep it to one format. And of course, uh, rest in peace, Steve Dillon. All right, guys, another one that recently came out. This was on my most wanted omnibus list. The What If Volume 1, Volume 1 Omnibus. So I, I went with the classic DM cover. This is the uh, cover for Issue 1. I think this is a cool omni because they're all just one-offs. They're all just like What If Tales of famous storylines you can jump in in the middle of this if you want to just read you know what if jane foster became thor so super cool volume two is coming out this year as well let's flip through it all right guys on to what if and did i say this was the dm cover this is actually the regular cover which is odd because typically the dm is like that throwback cover from one of the uh issues inside of the omnibus but this is the regular cover it does have two dm variants one of them being this cover what if jane foster had found the hammer of thor which is funny because in canon she did in jason aaron's run and the other is what if the marvel bullpen had become the fantastic four so I went with this regular cover, the cover for number one uh, of the series. Uh, this does have a $100 cover price. Here's the spine. And here's what it collects in the back. So issues 1 through 15 and 17 through 22. I don't know why they omitted issue 16. It is a Shang-Chi issue. Maybe there was something in there that didn't age well. I don't really know. But uh, that's what it contains. And... This was a pretty lengthy volume, so this is volume one omnibus. They're gonna be collecting the rest, it seems. Inside of the dust jacket, you have a little forward from Uatu, the Watcher. Then it talks about the creators, Roy Thomas, Donald Glutt, Rick Honberg, and Alan Kupperberg. Kupperberg. You have uh, the same cover on the hard cover. Here's the spine, and then the Jane Foster virgin covers, it looks like, on the back, so. Yeah, I thought this was a fun book, man. I, I think, uh, like I said before, you could just pick it up and read whatever issue interests you. You don't have to really read it from front to back, but you obviously can. What if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? All of these stories <laughs> really ended up being tragic, which is pretty funny uh, at the end of the day. So you have, look at this bonus material in the back. What if the Hulk had the brain of Bruce Banner? A lot of classic material here, man. What if the world uh, knew that Daredevil was blind? What would happen? This one right here. It's funny how this became a key issue with the Jason Aaron run. Great artwork, interesting stories. Like I said, one-offs. What if Nova had been four other people? Some of them not as clever as the others. All the intros by The Watcher. And what perfect timing. With What If on Disney Plus right now, go check it out. Let me see if there's anything in the back of that's noteworthy. But it looks like you get the questions page at the end of each issue. Ralph Macchio doing the uh, doing an introduction here. Some original art. Let's 
trade paperback covers, kind of a updated coloring. All right, and the last one that's already released, we have X Factor by Peter David. I love seeing the spinoff X titles coming out, Excalibur, New Mutants, and now X Factor. Uh, they didn't decide to jump in with issue one. They jumped in with Peter David's run for whatever reason, I guess Extreme 90s, but we'll flip through it and take a look at it nonetheless. All right, guys, on to X Factor by Peter David. Now, this is the DM variant, but both covers are by Al Milgram. You can't really go wrong either way. That 90s X, uh, X Factor team. Here we have the spine and the back. So it jumps in with issue 55 and then it continues with issues 70 through 92, has annuals seven and eight, Incredible Hulk 390 and 392, or through 392, and material from X Factor annual five and six and New Mutants annual six. Got a $100 cover price, biography on X Factor and on the creative team. And a beautiful wraparound cover here. You got to love the artwork. The multiple man, strong guy, Polaris. Now we've got a Havoc cover page here. Interior credits. Table of contents. And then jumping in here, uh, kind of a synopsis of what's happened before Peter David jumped on the run here. So I'm pretty sure I've read some of these issues back in the day, some things that tied in with other Marvel issues, but I definitely didn't read the whole run front to back, which is why I look, you know, I love this format. I would never have been able to hunt down these issues, put together a run. Uh, so cool to uh, get this packaged in. 90s um, Peter David Hulk here. Don't miss a sinister cover. This is the era that I grew up in, man. This is the stuff that was on the stands when I was a kid going into the comic shop. Uh, I've definitely read Executioner's Song. Great artwork here. We got some apocalypse action here. Yeah, so I probably did read a lot of this stuff, man, but I don't know. I can't really think of it off the top of my head. Anything that was a tie-in, though, to a bigger event. I'm pretty sure I read the Executioner's Song oversized hardcover. Looks like we got the uh, X-Men swimsuit edition stuff in the back here. Second printing, always had those gold covers back then. Got some pinups. That's dope. The wraparound cover here. Some nice bonuses, some original art. Yeah, Fatal Attractions here. So that's the stuff that I read. The Fatal Attractions and the uh, Executioner song. Joe Jusco 1992 Marvel Masterpieces, the Jim Lee set, the Marvel Universe set. I like, I like how they've been throwing the trading cards in the back of these. Cool. All right, guys, now I had some trouble finding the release date of this. I'm pretty sure that it comes out this week. So uh, check for Cosmic Ghost Rider. We got the Marvel Cosmic Universe by Donny Cates, but now we're just gonna focus on one of his creations, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, I love this character. I think it's so cool the way he incorporated all these different characters into one. We'll talk more about it when we flip through it. All right, so this is the regular cover by J. Scott Campbell. The DM variant is by Jeff Shaw, which has this adorable baby Thanos uh, riding on Cosmic Ghost Rider. So you have your pick on that. Of course, this is written by Donny Cates. This uh, is a character that he introduced in his Thanos run, and it does collect that Thanos 13 through 18, Annual 1. Then it has the first mini series, Cosmic Ghost Rider 1 through 5. Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys the Marvel Universe or Marvel History 1 through 6 and Avengers 22 through 25, Revenge of the Cosmic Ghost Rider 1 through 5 and then Thanos Legacy 1 and Wolverine Black, White and Blood issue 3 which just came out recently. $100 cover price on here and yeah I guess you're going to have a couple of more creators or, or writers than Donny Cates. So inside of the, uh, of the dust jacket here you got your biography on the character which is I'm not going to spoil it for you in case you don't know. Uh, Donny Case, Jeff Shaw, Dylan Burnett, and a bunch of other writers from those other runs that I mentioned. And again, with all the modern books, they're going to give you the beautiful wraparound covers. This one is amazing. You got Galactus, Cosmic Ghost Rider, 
big, huge paneling. It reminds me of the Infinity Gauntlet issue one for some reason. Right, we got the bright yellow interior, the chains. Here's your uh, creators on each of these issues and then jumps into Thanos wins. I loved this Thanos run, especially Thanos wins, essentially old man Thanos. I read this one in single issues as it came out, as I did with all, most of this stuff actually. So the character is super interesting. I mean, the people will probably compare it to Deadpool and say it's a little bit slapstick, but I think if you really break down his origin, it makes a lot of sense on why he became that way. Uh, so then, yeah, the character bounces around in other titles and miniseries after his appearance in that run. I don't think I read the Avengers stuff though. But I definitely read his solo miniseries, him traveling across the galaxy with baby Thanos. And uh, I believe in the the last one, the Revenge of the Cosmic Ghost Rider, he's got some other, some innocent that he's uh, dragging along with him. I forget what her deal was though. All right here, so what's this? Some some nods to other issues, a variant gallery in the back, homage to Silver Surfer Four. I thought it was super fun, man. A lot of variants. Pages kind of sticking together. <clears throat> so you guys get the idea. Man, a ton of variants in the back. And that's probably it. Dang, it keeps on going. All right, so next up, these are pre-releases, but these are some reprints. So first of all, Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. This is the uh, regular cover, and it collects his short-lived run on Spider-Man because then he left and founded Image Comics. This went out of print. It's back in print, and uh, we'll take a look at it now. And it has three covers. I guess they're all considered just the regular cover. So you have this one, then you have the black suit version by Todd McFarlane, which was, I think, issue 13. Uh, and then the Spider-Man Wolverine issue. We'll see him on the back, I think, here. So here's the spine. Again, a very thin Omni uh, because he only did, what is it, 15 issues? Issues 1 through 14, then issue 16, uh, which ties in with X-Force 4 for those hor the horizontal storyline there. So, uh, yeah, here's the cover, issue 13, and I guess 12 is the other cover. Uh, yeah, so classic McFarlane run, $75 cover price has the same great artwork on the hardcover like the first printing did. So nice to see that's still there with uh, modernized coloring. So what can you say about this book? I mean, I think most people agree that you're, you're in it for the artwork. The storyline isn't, you know, the best Spider-Man story ever. But uh, Todd packing in as many Spider-Man uh, villains that he could. Uh, so you got Lizard here, you got Hobgoblin, you got Sabretooth Wolverine. Like, he literally looked for excuses to throw in just characters that he liked. Ghost Rider. Uh, epic artwork, though, man. I think it's amazing. Um, I remember when this came out and it went out of print. I'm like, how did you guys not pick this up when it came out, man? But I guess, you know, people come to the game later on and stuff. But, yeah, man, scoop it up. It'll probably go uh, out of print again because they're only making so many of these and it's such a popular run. But uh, definitely should pick up uh, Todd. He talks about the recall juggernaut panel in the back here. So you got some bonuses. Todd artwork, recolorized, black and white in the back. Yeah, this is a must have, man, for Spider-Man fans or McFarlane fans or Marvel fans. All right, guys, next up, we have the Young Avengers Omnibus. This is also a thin Omni by Kieran Gillen. Funny enough, they've been introducing members of this team in all of the Disney Plus shows. So are we going to see something Young Avengers? Maybe a show, maybe a movie. Who knows? Let's take a look at the source material, though, just in case they do. All right, guys, Young Avengers is scheduled to come out on October 6th. It has 360 pages. This book has three covers. This right here is your regular cover by Jamie McKelvey. You've got a DM variant here by Brian Lee O'Malley. And I'm not really sure who did this cover. All right, so let's take a look at the spine here. And here's the back. So it collects issues one through 15, plus uh, Marvel Now point one. Well, just the Young Avengers material. 
Uh, the inside has quotes from the Young Avengers and then biography on the creators to the right. You got an all white hardcover here on the front, spine, and back. And like I said, these are all characters that have been popping up on uh, Disney Plus. So curious to see what Marvel is going to do with the characters. You have uh, America Chavez here. You have young Loki, who we did see. Uh, who else did we see? Uh, Wanda's kids, uh, Wiccan and Speed. Uh, Kate Bishop as Hawkeye is going to be showing up in the Hawkeye series. So uh, I have not read this run. It looks like a super fast read, though, man. Only a couple of issues. Uh, modern artwork. It's not. It doesn't look too dialogue heavy. So um, probably should give this a quick read. Get an idea of what the MCU plans to do with this team and these characters. Are they building up? I guess a big Avengers-like television series that kind of would make more sense. I, I would assume. But uh, even what Patriot we already got introduced to as well. So yeah, I think it's only a matter of time before we get some kind of collective team show. All right, guys, into the Conan universe, we have Cole. This is the Destroyer, the original Marvel Years, the second Cole Omni, but this is different material. Let's flip through and take a look at it. All right, so I almost have my dates wrong here because there's a Cole the Conqueror omnibus coming out, but this is Cole the Destroyer. This one doesn't come out until November 3rd, and the first Cole omnibus was Cole the Savage. So this is the regular cover here by Paulo Sequeira, and the DM variant is the cover for issue four, which is by Mike Plube. Yeah, so I'm not sure if Cole the Conqueror is going to be delayed or if we just got a super early copy of this, but here, this talks about Cole the Destroyer. We're talking Bronze Age. We're talking Conan Universe stuff. Here's all the creators on the run. And this one collects uh, issues one through 10 from the 1971 series, plus you have Cole the Destroyer, issues 11 through 29. Uh, Creature on the Loose, issue 10, Monster on the Prowl, 16, Cole and the Barbarians, 1 through 3, The Savage Sword of Conan, 9, and Conan the Barbarian, 10, and Annual 3. Uh, this has a $125 cover price. Similar aesthetic to Conan, and it looks just like the other Cole Omnibus, so you'd like to see that uniformity. Let's take a look at the book here. So, another uh, Roy Thomas written bronze age uh property that i'm not really familiar with i mean i didn't even know who cole was until uh i saw the omnis come out and when i started reading the conan omnibus i think he's even mentioned like right away as some type of god or something along those lines uh roy thomas loves to write long introductions uh and i can appreciate the artwork here i like i said before i like bronze age artwork i just don't really have any attachment to the characters here but i know a lot of you guys uh, you know, may have grew uh, grew up reading this stuff and think about it, man. Like instead of trying to hunt down old dusty issues or expensive slabbed versions, uh, you can get it all packaged in these omnis. So I could appreciate the fact that they're making them. Will I ever get around to reading it? I don't know. <laughs> That's yet to be seen. Uh, we dip back and forth into some black and white. Again, great pencil work. here so yeah you know you get the vibes bronze age heroic warrior type of stuff a little sci-fi fantasy action got a cyclops here here's uh some original artwork in the back that was a color guide that's pretty cool so you get nice bonus material in these books as well all right, next up, we have the recent Marvel event with Empire. So I thought this was pretty cool because it gives me hope that every big event that has a million tie-ins will eventually get turned into an omnibus. And I feel like this was one of the quicker ones. Maybe this one and Absolute Carnage. Uh, we're going to take a look at this one, but this kind of felt like, like a sample copy of the book, the way that it was constructed. And it looks like it's from that other factory that does the square spines. But we'll take a look at it, flip through it. Some unreleased material in this book, which is pretty interesting as well. All right, guys, so the Empire Omnibus is scheduled to come out November 17th. This is the reg uh, the regular cover by Jim Cheung. And then here we have the variant cover by him as well, the DM variant. It's a $125 cover price with 1,088 pages. Let's take a look at the spine here. So a nice big event omnibus that is stacked up with issues. So. It has incoming issue one, Road to Empire, The Kree Scroll War, 
Empire Zero, Avengers, Empire Zero, Fantastic Four, then Empire 1 through 6, so kind of like Infinity Gauntlet. It's just a six issue miniseries, but it has all these tie ins. And then you have here Empire Aftermath, Avengers, Empire Fallout, Fantastic Four, Lords of the Empire, Emperor Hulkling, Celestial Messiah, and Swordsman, Empire X Men 1 through 4, which was probably the best miniseries out of this run. Empire Savage Avengers, Empire Captain America 1 through 3, Empire Avengers 1 through 3, X Men uh, issues 10 through 11, which is their ongoing run that was happening at the time. Same with Fantastic Four with issues 21 through 23, Captain Marvel 18 through 21, Immortal She Hulk 1, Web of Venom Empire's End, Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda 7 and 8, and Empire Handbook. And the previously unpublished material, Empire Spider Man 1 and Empire Thor 1. So this book came out during the pandemic, and it was kind of like, I don't know, a weird time, obviously, especially for comic books, but uh, they solicited stuff like Thor and Spider-Man. Uh, stuff that happened in those books was referenced in other issues, but they never came out. So that's what was unique about this omnibus side. I don't know if it's ever really been done, publishing unpublished material that was supposed to tie in. Uh, here we have kind of uh, what's going on here. This was really kind of sold as a uh, sequel to the Kree Scroll War, but it ended up being like this Avengers Fantastic Four event that really was all surrounding Hulkling. Amazing wraparound cover though. I think that looks awesome. I like the colors. I like the characters here. Now this one, like I mentioned, this one feels like a sample book. Like it's got this kind of square. It feels a little rough and beat up a little bit around the edges. So uh, I'm assuming that, you know, your copy won't come out like this, but this one it was kind of weird. It even had these kind of stuck in the front and back of the pages here. I've never seen anything like that. So yeah, it was a little rough. But anyway, let's flip through it here. Here we have creative, the creators, all the little uh, clumps of mini series. This incoming one was like uh, something that was setting up. I feel like it was setting up more than this though, if I recall. But it could have just been incoming with the Kree Scroll War stuff. So what I did like about this, I think it was the Fantastic Four issue zero. They basically rescue these children warriors that are trained, you know, to fight and to, and to battle and they save them. I think one's a Kree, one's a scroll. But then it ended up becoming like this weird uh, plant-based alien life, life form race that was trying to take over Earth or something. And, and it was weird because everything that was going on with Krakoa at that time as well. It was like, okay, everything's plants, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of weird. The plant people were able to like resurrect the swordsmen and, and characters like that. And um, yeah, it, I mean, it tied in with a lot of ongoing titles at the time. I think the uh, X-Men was like mutants versus zombie plants or something like that, which was fun. You know, just kind of like a fun little not no big stakes having mini series attached to it i think a lot of this was like propping up the hulkling as like the ruler of uh the scrolls a lot of material here guys so the back you have some scripts you have some inked pages and then of course you got some variants and stuff here in the back as well now, is it me or does this, is this published correctly or, or maybe it is. Okay. It was looking like there was like bonus material in between regular issues, but I think it was just at the end of the issue. Yeah, we're good. All right. Anyway. So yeah, I think it's just cool to see uh, all the tie-ins and the main story collected in one omnibus. That's kind of one of the things that attracted me to the format to begin with. And we're going to end it off with Conan, the original Marvel years. They're on to volume six. The last two Conan books have been a little bit on the thinner side, but no shortage of Conan material. It looks like they could probably do double what they've done now to catch up to the end of the run. But uh, let's flip through and take a look at the last book in the hall. All right. Also on November 17th, we have Conan the Barbarian. This is uh, the original Marvel years volume six. This is the DM cover, which is the cover for issue 171. And Marvel doesn't always do that, but they sent the DM cover and the regular cover, which is by Paulo Sequera and Frank D. Armada. So pretty cool to have both. We'll leave this one sealed and toss it in a gem crate. 
So flipping to the back, uh, we can see it has a $125 cover price, collects Conan the Barbarian 150 through 171 with annuals eight and nine and what if 43. Inside of the dust jacket, talking about Conan, talking about the creators and the hardcover here, which is uniform, like I said, with the other Conan ones. So those they're keeping uniform. Don't tell me they're gonna start changing the spines on them. All right, awesome cover page here. Here we have some credits, table of contents, introduction by Larry Hama. They always give you the map right in the beginning. So man, up to 150 on this stuff here. So, you know, same kind of thing as with Cole. Uh, I didn't grow up reading Conan. Uh, I wasn't really a Conan fan. I never even seen the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but uh, I do like Bronze Age artwork. I think the art looks great warrior gladiator sci-fi fantasy type of stories and i started reading the first uh volume it's not bad man it, i can see why people like it you got some whimsical natures to it uh yeah fighting clashing love so just not something that i grew up reading i think it was just a little bit before my time All right, guys, that's the haul for today. A lot of books, a lot of content to go through. Let me know which books that you're going to be picking up in the comments down below. Like I said, if you're digging the content, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Don't go anywhere. I have other omnibus hauls for you to check out. Stay minty fresh. Peace.